As I'm leaning over my gun turret, looking for bombs, the next thing I know... Hey guys, welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. My name's Thomas. Today's video is going to be just a little bit different. Today, we're going to talk about how I went from finding bombs in Iraq to finding out why your car won't start in the I winter. joined the Marine Corps right after I graduated high school in the early 2000s. By 2005, I was celebrating my 21st birthday in the middle of Iraq, headed to one of the worst cities in Iraq at the time, a place called Fallujah. I was on a security mission, middle of the night. I just remember that very vividly. I was thinking, what am I doing here? I am 21 years old. And my job, when I was over there, I was in the first Humvee of the whole convoy, and I was the machine gunner up top. So the first truck and the first person up top, the first machine gunner, and my job was to find all the bombs before they found us. Because if they found us, it was bad. Or if I missed one, it would be bad for somebody behind us. So my sole job was try to find these bombs. Well, imagine this. You're in a Humvee going down the road, middle of the night, 55 miles an hour, trying to look for a bomb. And the bombs ain't just sit out there looking, oh, look at that bomb. No, they're buried. Or there'll be one little wire sticking out. Or there'll be an MRE package that's stapled back together. Things like that. So imagine having a spotlight trying to find these things. I actually got a couple awards for it because I ended up being pretty good at it. But I did miss some. And the worst feeling you can have is when you're driving, you're looking around, and the next thing you know, you hear this huge explosion behind you. You turn around like you know what just happened. You turn around and you see one of your friends' Humvees on fire. Or I remember a semi-truck guy, the civilian working for KBR was over here. His truck got hit by a bomb and it was my job to find it. I missed it. It blew up his truck, caught on fire. Two brand new Humvees on the back of the semi burnt down. Civilian dude, American guy, like lived in Ohio, like beside me. Jump out of his uh, semi driving 55 miles an hour down the road. Had to dive out of this bad boy on fire. And that was all because I didn't find the bomb. August 25th, 2006, around 1600, 4 p.m. I was on a recovery mission in a city called Chaldea, Iraq. We went out there to recover a vehicle that was already blown up by a bomb. So we knew it was dangerous territory. So here we are on a small road in this village. No one was around. When there's no other people around, no Iraqis, that's how you know something bad's about to happen because they scatter. And moments later, as I'm leaning over my gun turret, looking for bombs, next thing I know, all I see is blackness and I can see fire. Next thing I know, I hear the explosion. I remember that because it wasn't at the same time. It was like the bomb was faster than the speed of sound. It was really weird. My ears are ringing so bad that it's painful. My head's really foggy because I just got smashed in the face from where the bomb blew up and blew up the front of our truck, which ended up breaking my nose, busted my teeth and lips all up, took a big gash underneath my chin, a gash right here, a piece of shrapnel, slipped my head. I had shrapnel throughout my right side and I hurt my back severely bad, which at the end, it cost me my Marine Corps career because my back was in bad shape because I ended up having back surgery later on where a titanium rod was inserted in my back and they fused the vertebrae together. After that, it was a no-go for me. But I was very lucky. It could have been so much worse. I could have lost my legs, my arms. I could have died. So I am very, very lucky and I'm very thankful that the injuries I did have are minor compared to what they could have been. Once we got back to the States, that's when I started noticing the symptoms of my PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. But at the time, you couldn't tell anyone because you wouldn't get promoted. Uh, they could change your job, take your gun away. Now the higher ups are telling you, hey, come forward. But you know what happens when they do because you've seen people come forward. Next thing you know, instead of being an MP, uh, they're the mail clerk or something like that. So you just simply didn't talk about it. You just suffer. And I suffered for a long time, but it didn't matter. I still had to go back to Iraq in 2008 
doing the same stuff, but this time I'm the squad leader. Now I'm in charge of all these missions. So I'm making the briefs and the debriefs. I'm coordinating the routes and I'm making all the decisions. And when you make a wrong decision, it ain't something small. People die. I was only 24 years old at the time. I managed to make it through it and get back. Once we did, my body was beat up bad. I finally ended up having my back surgery and my Marine Corps journey, my Marine Corps career. It was over at that point. So for the next few years, I did nothing but rehab my body, rehab my back, and I actually started getting treatment for PTSD at that. But with the extent of all my injuries, I ended up being medically retired from the Marine Corps, and they did give me a Purple Heart for being wounded in combat. Now I'm a civilian. I'm married, and I have a child named Braylon, but I'm struggling bad with PTSD, and I'm struggling with other stuff. But that's for another video. I'll do another video where I tell my whole complete life story. So we got to leave some things out. But just know I was in very bad shape. I ended up leaving my wife and kid like the loser I was at the time. And for the next two or three years, it just got worse and worse. Now I was on the brink of suicide. And then I met a woman who saved my life. She got me back on track. And she stayed by me while I kept fucking up over and over. But she stayed there. She helped me get better. We ended up having a child together born on Thanksgiving of 2015. She said, now you're doing better. You need to do something. And within the last two years in the Marines, I didn't really have a job. So I studied to be a mechanic. So I took what I learned them last few years and I went out on my own. I struggled and messed up the entire time. That's why I made some videos, which I'll post up here for you guys to watch. And you don't have to deal with the BS I dealt with. So I started building my business. I've been building it day after day. And it has given me a purpose. It keeps my mind busy. It makes me feel good and accomplished. And I can actually provide for my family. Now I have my son back in my life. The one I left when I was a loser and suffering. Ailey Floyd saved my life. My kids give me a reason not to quit. And my business gives me what I need to take care of them and myself. And that's how being a mobile mechanic saves my life every day. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and in the comments. Tell me if you like this video or if you like to hear a little bit more of my entire life. When I was growing up, there was a lot of things that I dealt with that a lot of other kids didn't have to. So it's a pretty interesting story. So if you want to hear it, I will put it out there. So just let me know. And like always, Semper Fi till next time.